Hey guys, it's Aaron. And today I'm going to answer that question that I keep seeing, which is how do I make my SketchUp models look better? Could I have come up with a more subjective term than look better? Probably not. Uh, what I want to do is I want to take a look. I got a couple of gazebos back here. Um, and just look at why they look different and what I did to take it from one to the other. Uh, this is going to be specific to things like materials and environments uh, in an existing model. So we'll talk about things that you could do in the modeling process to make things look different, but I wanna be specific about taking something that is already and making it look better. So <laughs> let's do that, let's talk about it. Okay, so here are my two existing models. So this is the model I started with. This is an old gazebo model that I had. And uh, this is this is many, many years old, actually. Uh, it's, I want to I wanna take this and I, without changing the model, make it look better, more like this thing over here on the side. So there's a couple things I wanna acknowledge before we do anything else. So this was modeled off of an actual gazebo that was created. I had an event I went to. I thought it'd be fun to sit down in the booth and actually model this thing. Uh, so I did, and this is what it came up with. It's a quick little model, but it was fun. Um, so a couple things I want to point out. So you will notice that around the outside and the inside, this is not a continuous piece. These are boards that are put together. And this is actually how it was. I believe that the original model is like tongue and groove, or I can't remember how it was joined, but that was kind of why they made it was to show these these pieces. So we're going to go with that. We're going to assume that these are each different pieces going around like this. Uh, same thing down here. You can see we have materials turning, uh, using the materials rather than modeling. That's great. So it's a very light model too. So this is not a, this is not a big, heavy, hefty thing. Uh, it just doesn't look awesome. I mean, it looks, it looks like a, I mean, in the best possible way, it looks like a SketchUp model and that's exactly what it is. Uh, we do have shadows turned down right here. Um, but we can, we can make this look better in SketchUp 2025. So one thing we could do, of course, we could do entourage. I could put this on grass. I could put some face me or 3D trees in the background. I could do that kind of stuff, but I wanna look at just, you know, modeling in SketchUp, just visualization, what could I do here? So um, yeah, we'll come, we'll come talk about the full circle, the final model over here in just a minute. Before that, let's, let's actually get hands on and make some of these changes. So uh, the big thing, the two big things that I will say we're going to play with is new materials, which is that those PBR materials, and then also environments. So let's start with environments. I'm going to come over here to environments, and I'm going to take, uh, we'll take this, that's, that's in a good environment, right here, this one where it's out in the kind of in the woods kind of thing. I like that. Let's go ahead and turn that on. So immediately something happens. Right, so immediately my materials look better than they did because as soon as I put on environments, uh, I get this colored light coming in from somewhere. You can see it's shining, it's hitting up here. Uh, it aligns with my shadows. I'm getting some reflections. I got some default properties that are automatically placed on this old wood uh, material that was on here. Um, something I don't like, and this bugs me immediately, like to the point that I have to fix it, otherwise it will distract me, is this cast shadows on ground. I'm just going to change that real quick. I just do that by going to shadow settings and down here, if this is collapsed, just hit the little button and turn off on ground. So that'll still cast shadows onto the other geometry. It just won't leave this thing sitting on the ground like that. So um, this is a great start. So in some cases that might be enough. That gives me enough realistic light, enough change in the material that that looks pretty good. Even with or without shadows, that looks better. So, there are cases where that might be all you need. One thing I'm going to do is, uh, much as I like this sky dome of the woods, it looks like a peaceful place to hang out and spend time, uh, I, it, it kind of detracts from my image, actually. So there's a couple things I could do over here. Come back into the Environments tab and hit Edit. One thing I could do is I could play with the exposure of my sky dome so I could make it brighter so my model stands out more. I could make it dimmer. So again, same thing, my, my model stands out more if you still want that in the background. The problem really is that this leaf floor and the material I got in here for the wood are really close together. So kind of no matter what I do, that's gonna look 
not perfect. Um, if this is one of those situations where I took the picture and this is exactly where it's going to sit, I might try to make it work. But in this case, I think what I really want from here is the lighting. So I'm just going to turn off Use Environment as Sky Dome. By leaving Use Environment as Reflections turned on still, I'm still going to get my lighting just as I did before. But this just uh, takes away that picture from the background. So we're talking about, again, making this model look best possible, not necessarily the surrounding environment. That is an option. That is definitely a way we could do this. All right, so another thing we could do in here, obviously, like I said, we've got our environments turned on. The other thing, so if I look at one of these materials, um, yeah, let's go to our, what's in this. So I got this material right here. If I double click this, this is an old material. Like I said, this was imported from, I can't remember, 2022 or something like that. Uh, and you can see it did automatically give me metalness and roughness, and I could play with this and you know change how much uh, metalness I want on that wood material. So fairly down fairly bar, far. Uh, roughness, I can turn it up and down a little bit. This is gonna kind of make it shiny or not shiny because it doesn't have a bump map or anything like that. So it's gonna just kind of change the glossiness of it. So if I turn that up, it's gonna diffuse it a little more and the metalness go down. It's gonna, but it's not going to pick up like the grain of the wood, no matter what I do. Unless I create and import a normal map, that's not gonna happen. So this is kind of will be the best I could get with just this material. But if I was to come in here and let's go grab, let's go to wood and grab a different material. Um, let's try this. No, that's, I always get caught by that. I think that's a flooring material. Uh, nope, that's the flooring material. Uh, okay, there we go. Nah, don't love that. Let's try it. There we go. I like that. It's a little more close to that original cherry kind of look. Uh, you can see that material, as I put it on there, actually has some texture to it. See that? It's actually got some scratches. I can see the wood grain in there. And of course, that can also be edited. So if I was to come in here and double click that, um, I could change you know, how much of that normal we want. Do we want that really bumping out there? Um, and I could, if I wanted to turn metalness on and get a little bit more exaggerated lighting. I do kind of like that, even for something like metal or for something like wood get a little bit of metalness in there. It's going to give that a little bit darker darkness and brighter brightness, uh, kind of a cool option. But yeah, I could play with that, change the direction of the normal, that kind of thing. And this is going to almost just immediately uh, bring this to another level. So I'm going to go ahead and put that same material uh, on all four sides. I put it on the top and you see it kind of turned weird. It's a weird shape. So what I'm going to do is uh, just right click on that. I'm going to hit texture position. And then I can just use my uh, rotate to just spin that material around. I don't want to necessarily rescale it, so I'm going to keep it the same size and then just get it so the grains go in the direct, correct direction. Put it on the underside too. All right, there we go. So, with that, so just looking at this piece right here versus the rest, you can kind of see it is shiny, so it's got, you know, maybe it's, it's outside. It's probably polyurethane. That's, that's probably good. And I can see how that works. The other thing that uh, bites me about old SketchUp models, makes it less, again, pretty, um, is a distinctive feature of SketchUp models, which is that heavy profile. So each of these pieces on the outside edges is getting this big, heavy line. And I like it a lot for style as image, but if I want it to look like pretty, it's a cover shot, that kind of thing, I'll probably want to come in here to my styles, click on my edges and turn off profiles. So you can see, see how much lighter that just made that? Um, like I said, I like it. It's that distinct SketchUp look, but look at that. It just feels lighter and cleaner when I turn those off in this particular model. So keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, something else I might do, like I said, this was intentional where I did have these breaks and like I said, this was, was, was a bunch of small pieces all connected together. This was not one continuous round piece. So it's supposed to look like this, but it doesn't mean I have to maintain these hard boundaries between. So one of the things I can do, I'm going to go into one of these components, close this. I'm going to say view, component edit, and hide similar components and get rid of the rest of those. And uh, I'm going to leave this. I'm going to select and delete the end piece here the end here. And then I'm going to grab all my edges on this edge or on this end. And I'm going to go to entity info and I'm going to hide them by clicking the eyeball. Same thing over here. Grab all these, these four, turn them off. And when I do that, it means each of these pieces is going to kind of meld into the next rather than giving me that hard line. So again, maintaining those pieces. So one thing I could do is if this is supposed to be a round piece, 
uh, I could model that at a higher number of edges. Um, that would give me a smooth thing, but actually, like I said, I need this separate look. That looks, so look at this, compare this to this piece out here. They're very similar, but you can see the difference between the two. Something else I would take a look at in here is this, I think it's supposed to be brass piece at the top. Um, a kind of a yellowy material. And again, if I look in here, this is the material that imported. It did automatically get a metalness and a roughness, so I could turn this metalness up so it's super shiny, turn my roughness down. I can make it almost mirror-like, not almost, that's straight up mirror-like. And that would be an option. I could put that in there. Um, that's not really what I'm looking for though. What I'm looking for is a good metally material that looks like metal, maybe something kind of you know, hammered or brushed or something like that that looks like a realistic piece of brass I would see outside. So I could play with these dials and get it a little bit closer to what I want. Or I could use one of the new materials. So I'm going to do that. Let's come in here and let's go to our metal and, oops, and grab this brass color. And we'll just fill this whole thing with it. All right. So you can see how that changed. It looks, it doesn't, I was going to say it looks good. It doesn't look good yet. But let's come back in here and let's grab this material and let's turn that roughness and metalness back on. And you can see, like I said, it just has a better, like, uh, dispersed. Texture, I don't know even how to describe it. It looks better. It just looks better. Um, so we keep metalness up and start dragging our roughness down until it gets about to the spot where it's just shiny enough. I don't want to go like here all the way to reflection, but I don't want to go here where it's just dull. I want to come somewhere in between where it's like a realistic look of a material, a metal material. I think that looks way better. All right, so these are a couple of things uh, I could do, and, and I'm not gonna do all these. We'll hop back over to the final version in just a second, but uh, I would do the same thing, find a better material for the, the base. I just used some tile there, apparently. Um, but one of the other things, one more thing I'm gonna say, again, air quoting the words better, how to make this look better is to do a little more work with the edges. So if I come in here, back into styles, on my edges, uh, I could do things, depending on the model, I could turn my edges off. Uh, this doesn't look amazing with them off, but you could possibly fine tune that a little bit. I'm gonna keep my edges on. I'm gonna do this though, I'm gonna come over to color. I'm gonna hit edit the color and use my colors window to choose like a dark gray over black. So watch this difference, black, gray, Maybe a little lighter. That's too light, I think that last one was good. By using a light gray rather than the black, it just draws less attention to the line. So they're still there. They still separate the colors. They still define the edges, but it's just not quite as harsh. So going to just a slightly darker, dark gray as opposed to black makes a big difference in my opinion. So let's go, let's go. I know this is, this is partway transformed, but let's do the, the baking show thing. And we'll pull the finished product out of the oven. So those are the same things I did. I just did it to all the pieces. So you can see, I still have my segmented circle at the bottom. So I go around there and around the top, I have my material up here, I did a different material down here. It's very reflective, but you know, cause that's, cause that's what a, a piece of stone out, <laughs> out sitting outside would look like reflective metal or reflective stone like that. But you can see, um, I have my lighter lines there, my hidden edges between these pieces are all still separate pieces. Same down here. It's the same component repeating, but I turn the edges off. So everything comes together and that's, just a couple things. If I had done this from the start as I was modeling, it would not have added very much time to the process. This was a quick and dirty model for sure, but you can see how much nicer that looks than that traditional uh, just sketch up quick and dirty materials. A uh, little bit more life in it as I get those lights and the colors on there. So there we go. Just a, uh, a, a couple tips for making models look better. Like I said, I know, I know better. What is better? Look at some, some of these, I know where you have the comment. I like the way SketchUp looks. I would keep it all in white, just ambient occlusion in white. And I agree. That's cool. That absolutely, I love that look. You guys know, if you've seen me model live, I model that way almost all the time. But taking advantage of some of the core functionality that's already in SketchUp, like environments and PBR materials, lets you go from that to something that looks not photo real, but just a little bit more deeper, you know, having ambient occlusion on there, having, having those materials and the environmental lightings just lets you take that model and go a little bit better.
If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please do leave us a comment down below. What do you think? Did I make it better? Did I make it worse? What's your thoughts on this? And do you have some other tips on how you make your SketchUp models look the best they possibly can? Better yet? Better. There's that word better again. Here's a better idea. If you have an idea for a good video, let me know that in the comments down below too. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.